Members of Bush, Inc. include Colin Powell, whose speech at the UN persuaded many Americans of Saddam's imminent danger and paved the way for war. Dick Cheney, without doubt the most frightening and secretive vice president in American history. George W. Bush himself, CEO of Bush, Inc. Condi Rice, whose love for her, quote, husband, W., undoubtedly clouded her judgment. Andy Card, who along with Alberto Gonzalez tried to get a very ill and hospitalized John Ashcroft to change his mind and allow a secret program to spy on Americans. CIA Chief George Slam Dunk Tennant, who told Bush and company whatever they wanted to hear. And Sec Def Donald Rummy Rumsfeld, the arrogant bastard behind the failing military mission in Iraq. What accounts for the political success of Bush, Inc., at least in the early years? Carl Rove, W's beloved turd blossom was very adept at dividing America into those who supported Bush Inc. and those who hated America. Turd Blossom was also very good at co-opting the media. He would often dangle succulent delicacies in front of those in the media he wished to drag over to the dark side. Many of our citizens have been lulled into a false sense of security during the Bush years. Many other Americans have lived with a pervasive fear, a malaise. Still other Americans have tried to bury their fear in the soft cocoon of pseudo-patriotism. In a sense, they have tried to sleep through the Bush years. Most of us were very impressed by the heroism of our first responders. The Bush ethos encouraged a kind of bloodlust after 9-11. Revenge fantasies were definitely manipulated by the neocons in order to get us into Iraq. As the Bush years draw to a close, our heroes, the police and security agents, are increasingly a little scary to many of us as Bush, Inc. has chipped away at our rights here at home. Any criticism of Bush, Inc. results in a fierce counterattack. Legitimate critics are considered snapping dogs by the employees and agents of Bush, Inc., we must ask if there is anything Bush, Inc. can do right. Katrina in Iraq. Disasters handled disastrously. Why has their war strategy been so mangled? Why can't chicken hawks like Cheney, who had five deferments to avoid Vietnam, suit up and ride around in unarmored Humvees with the troops they sent over to Iraq. He is handy with a rifle, shooting 70 birds a day and an occasional old man. Colin Powell famously warned W regarding Iraq, if you break it, you own it. Rather than have the good judgment to listen to him, W sided with Rummy and Dick. They got Colin to do a dog and pony show at the UN to ready America for war. Then Bush Inc. sent old Colin packing. Of all Bush Inc.'s blunders, the worst is undoubtedly Iraq. Rather than helping in the war on terror, Iraq has produced a whole new generation of skilled terrorists and turn much of the world against America. Our brave soldiers are perceived around the globe as bullies using their overwhelming firepower and technological advantages to destroy a country. Iraq may be a turning point in American history, a slow, tortuous collapse of the land of the free may be the final tragic result 
and ultimate consequence of Bush Inc. On the domestic side, Bush Inc. will forever be remembered for its horrendous mishandling of the Katrina hurricane disaster. Did W. really believe that Jesus would fix New Orleans and no government assistance would be required? Heck of a job, son of man. Science was seriously abused throughout the Bush years. In the early days, Bush Inc. poo-pooed any notion of global warming and rejected the Kyoto Accords to help prevent an impending disaster. Cheney made sure a whopping tax cut would go to purchasers of any gas-guzzling SUVs and scoffed at any need for energy conservation. Stem cell research was stymied. Intelligent design was encouraged as an alternative to settled science. Blind belief in his favorite philosopher, Jesus, and a sense that his instincts were more accurate than anything some expert could dream up, W has ruled unhindered by objective reality. Perhaps the greatest irony of Bush Inc. is that its titular head, W, is a religious fundamentalist. In many ways, he is not so very different from the Islamic fundamentalist he is struggling against. Yet a close reading of W's Christianity seems very far from what the good book describes. W's Jesus abhors the shiftless and lazy poor, loves venture capitalists with their can-do spirit, and believes in using violence to solve political problems. The gap between W and the Jesus I learned about in Sunday school seems so wide that I sometimes suspect that W's professed belief is just a ploy dreamed up by Turd Blossom to corner the evangelical vote. At its roots, Bush Inc. is an enterprise dedicated to dismantling the New Deal. Job one is to redistribute wealth upwards so that the social and economic demographic of the Bushes and their friends is richly rewarded. Since this demographic is rather small, Bush Inc. needed to embrace NASCAR, pork rinds, a touch of racism, xenophobia, gay baiting, and old-time religion to rope-a-dope millions of middle-class white voters into going against their own interests and voting Republican. The end result, lots of money for the top 1% of Americans, the only real constituency served by Bush Inc. Of course, the social Darwinism pushed by Bush Inc. will have some lasting effects. In order to have his war and eat his tax cuts too, W has set the stage for major economic disruptions ahead. I have observed that presidents often do the exact opposite of what they promise. This is especially true for W. Uniter, not a divider. Categorically untrue. Make America stronger. The army is almost broken. We are hated universally. There are many more terrorists working against us now than before Iraq. Responsible Republican fiscal strategies. America is on the verge of bankruptcy. The great champion of the American free market system may be the one who ends up destroying it. We Americans have been left in a state of doubt, fear, and confusion by Bush, Inc. There has been what the philosopher Max Shaler called a transvaluation of values. The dream of America that we have hoped to live has been corrupted. Bush, Inc. has broken the American dream for short-term profits. Can we any longer place our faith in the mean-spirited God who hates the marginalized but adores the rich, the connected, the K-street crowd? Can we even pretend to be a united people anymore? The long march towards enlightenment and rationalism started centuries ago by the Greeks has been halted. Instead, we Americans live in a ring of fear, trusting in nothing, fearful of everything.